Hi, I'm Martin, the creator of Fancade, and I get a lot of questions on how do I build a game using Fancade. Now, usually, you should probably start with the construction kits. They're full of blocks that are already scripted by someone else, and you can just drag and drop them to make games. However, a lot of people want to make new kinds of games that don't have kits yet. And this video is going to be for you. So I have a completely empty game here. And we're going to make a simple physics game where you push around a physics object using uh, by tapping it. And uh, you're supposed to navigate through a little obstacle course without colliding with anything. And I'll start by opening the inventory, going to the gadgets folder. Because there are some blocks here with the default physics, like this box. So it's really just a regular block, except if I place it in the air like that and press play, it'll fall down because it has physics by default. So I'll place a few of these. And this can serve as our object that we're going to push around. And then I'll place some grass blocks, for example, it doesn't really matter, but just something to get started on our obstacle course. Actually, let's make an, a small obstacle here. Like, so now you have to go over that. Right, so if I press play now, this um, falls down, but it falls down onto the floor and it's already on the floor. I want, for simplicity of making this course, I want it to fall that direction. So I'll go into the inventory and open the physics folder and find the gravity block. Set gravity, there it is. Now this one allows us to change so that um, this orange object will fall down. And it takes one input, which is a vector, a green uh, wire. So I'll go into the values and pick the vector and just wire that to the set gravity block. And then I can uh, tap here to change the values. So let's say 10, just try. And yeah, and now it falls, but upwards. Well, it, it falls in the direction of this arrow. That arrow tells you uh, which direction the Z axis goes. So I'll just flip the sign of that to make it fall the other way. All right. Um, next, I want to push it around a bit. So I'll go back to the physics folder and I'll use the add force block. This block applies a physical force to an object. So I'll, for the object, I'll connect it to, to our uh, orange square here. And for the force, I'll connect another vector. And let's just set 10 here. And now you can see it, it's um, sliding towards the right because I'm pushing it towards the right. Now let's try pushing it upwards. I want tapping it to move it upwards. And that's the Z axis. So maybe a hundred on Z like that. And of course now it, it pushes it up or upwards all the time, but I want that to happen when you tap it. So I'll open the inventory and go to the control folder and use the touch sensor. This one detects whenever you touch the screen. And when you do, it will execute anything wired to this. So I'll connect that to our uh, add force block. And now it, uh, the orange thing falls down until I tap. Then I apply the force. Actually, let's make it only happen when you start tapping. So this is a setting you can change down here. Right now, or by default, it's whenever you tap or whenever you touch but I want it to be when you start tapping, so it's when it begins sensing a, a touch. 
and I probably need to compensate for uh, uh, by uh, making the force a bit bigger because we're now we're only applying it once like that maybe even bigger yeah next right now I can tap where wherever but I want you to tap the the object you're pushing so I want to detect whether we're tapping that or whether we're tapping something else so to do that I can use the touch sensors uh, coordinate outputs so it tells us where we tapped so if I go into the math folder I can translate that into world coordinates so instead of knowing where on the screen I tapped I can know where in, in this little world we're building I tapped so I'll plug that in and actually let's inspect what we get there any of these wires we can connect in the values folder and inspect block just to look at what the values are so now you can see a lot of coordinates here and when I tap it tells me where I tapped but I want to know whether this orange square is uh, in is where I tapped so I'll go into the let's see objects folder there is an object called raycost or a block called raycost basically it's kind of a laser sensor it shoots a line from a position to another position and then it reports whatever it hit both the object and the position so if I connect that there then I get the object let's inspect that too we'll use the inspect object block so now if I tap the floor it just says none if I tap the block it says two and if I tap the level it says zero and these numbers they're just identifiers it doesn't really matter what number it is but it allows us to recognize what we tapped so I want to compare that number with the number coming from this pink wire so let's feed that into a variable to store that value so I'll open the variable folder and use the pink variables because it's a pink wire and I'll connect that there and just to make sure we can inspect that too so you see now it uh, the variable has the value 2 uh, when I tap our uh, orange thing it's also 2 so we can just compare those values so I'll go into the math folder and find the equal objects block so I'll just rewire those there let's trash these now that will check whether it's the same object that I tapped and it will feed out true if they're the same and I want to add the force if they're true so I'll go into the control folder and pick the if block just connect that there so instead of adding the force whenever I tap I want to do the check and if that's true then I want to add the force so let's try that so now when I tap on the floor nothing happens but when I tap on on the orange square then it adds the force so now we actually already have some control over it we can move it up and down but I want I want to push it left and right too so I'm thinking um, like when you when you tap it closer to the left edge it should push it away towards the right and when you tap somewhere here it should push it away towards the left so how do we do that well this ray cost actually gives us the position where we tapped 
So if, if we had the position of the object, we could compare them. Fortunately, there is a block for that. So I'll open the inventory, look in the objects folder maybe, yes, get position. And I want to check the position of our object. Actually, I don't even need this wire anymore because I have this variable. That can help us make the scripting a little neater, like that. So this will feed out the position of, um, of the orange square. And this will feed out the position we tapped. And I want to know how far along the x-axis we tapped, like if it was on the left or the right. So I need to split those vectors so I can get at the x component of the vector. And if we look in the math folder, there's a break vector block. So I'll wire that there. And I guess I'll use another one for this. So I'll get both the x coordinates. And then I want to get the difference between them to use as a force. So I'll just subtract them from each other. Just a regular minus. And let's inspect what we get from that. Use the number inspect block. So now when I tap on the left side, you can see the number over here is negative. And when I tap on the right side, it's positive. So we'll use that as the, f uh, we'll add that to the force to push it in that direction. So let's see. This is a number, but we need a vector as the force. So I'll open the math folder again. And uh, there's a make vector block. So it's the reverse of break vector. So it takes three components and creates a vector that we can feed into our add force. So I'll use that for x. And then previously I had this upward force. Um, I can actually plug that directly in here. as a regular number from the values folder. So what did I have, 2000? Like that, maybe. Doesn't seem to move right and left, but um, well, this is 2000 and this, I don't remember, but when we inspected it was like much smaller. So let's just scale this up a bit. We'll go back to the math folder and find the multiplication. Let's make some more room here. Maybe we can use 2000 there too. And I'll feed that to the x value of the vector. And that will be our force that we add. Well, yeah. Why is it going off in that direction? I think it's backwards. Like if I tap left, it moves left, but I want to push it right and vice versa. So let's just flip the value. Maybe make it a bit smaller too. I'll just take a minus 1000. Right, like that. That's what I wanted. See, now we can control this. Let's build, uh, let's build uh, some more level. See if we can fly through it. Um, let's make a little room first. Like that. Maybe place this a bit higher so you can fall a bit before you start moving. And we need something we need to navigate through here. 
something uh, challenging, but not too challenging. Hmm. Let's make a floor down here. Well, that's a high ceiling. I'll remove some blocks here. Something like that, maybe. So you're supposed to navigate above this wall, down this corridor, and then left, and then out. Let's try that, actually. Yeah, that could work. Um, all right, let's um, let's make it a bit more challenging. Like right now, it doesn't matter what I collide with; I can just keep playing. I want to check whether we collided with one of the walls, and then we should just lose. That'll make it more challenging. So I'll go into the inventory and look in the Control folder, I think. Yeah, there's a collision block here. So this one will trigger whenever this object collides with something. So I want to check whether this, our object collides. And then when that happens, I can wire something to this yellow wire. Uh, let's look in the, we want to lose, lose the game, game. There's a loose block. So I'll wire that there. Let's try that. See? Whenever we collide with the wall, we'll lose. Much more like a game already. And actually, let's add a sound effect. That usually adds to the game feel. So I'll go to the sound folder. There's a play sound block. And probably play that when you tap, tap, uh, when you tap the object. So after adding the force, I will play a sound effect too. And if I tap down here, I can pick from a number of sound effects. Let's see. This one will work. Yeah. Much better. Actually, let's um, let's style the level. Let's change the background color. That's the simplest way. Uh, I mean, some of these are not very pretty, but that one matches our grass blocks. Yeah, all right, well, we can lose, <laughs> but we cannot win, because we haven't added that yet. Let's do that next. So there, well, you should win when you exit this maze. And there are many ways we could do that, but I think the simplest would be probably to just compare uh, the, uh, where the block is and compare that to the um, the end of the level. So these arrows are always at the zero position. So if, and this is the Z arrow, so if it's below zero, it must have fallen out the level. And we already checked, we already got the block's position from here. So let's just copy that. There we have the Z position of, of our orange square. And let's see if that's less than zero, then we win. So I'll go into the math folder and find the less than block. So I'll wire that there. And, and this wire, by default, it's zero. So I don't even need to connect a zero there. And I'll copy that if block. So if that happens, I want to win. So I'll go back to the game folder. And there's a block for winning. 
So I'll wire that there. Now let's try that. Uh, I lost, but <laughs> let's uh, let's move this closer to the winning. Still hard. <laughs> yeah, that works for now. Let's move it back. Well, it's starting to look like a game. Um, next might be making more levels, but right now I just threw all the script blocks on the floor here. And if we make more levels, we would have to copy all the script blocks, which isn't very convenient. So what you usually do is just place all of this inside one of the game blocks. And that way, when you, when you, whenever you use that block, it will have the script blocks inside of it. So, uh, you don't need to copy them. So let's just, uh, let's just pick one of the blocks here, like one of the corner blocks and make a custom block so we can stuff the script blocks inside. So down here, I have a pencil icon and confirm that makes it editable. So now I can actually paint this block, for example, let's paint it a bit. I mean, you could style this however you wanted, but I'm just going to leave it orange just painting it so I remember which block it is. I can actually change the name too. Let's call it uh, game script maybe. And now there's a button to open the block and that reveals a circuit board here. That's where you can place blocks inside of it. So I'll drag that block there and the wire came loose. So I'll reattach that. And when I close the block, the script block will hide inside. So I can just drag all of our script blocks into that. And this circuit board automatically expands so that all the blocks fit. And now when we close it, see, much neater. Let's try playing this now. Yeah, that's a game. I mean, there we have it. An, um, a new game mechanic that hasn't been done in Fancade before, made from scratch. There are like a million things we could do this. We could make more levels, obviously. Maybe you would like uh, different types of obstacles, maybe obstacles that are moving, more sound effects and camera screen shakes. Maybe we could even um, have something other than um, just a rectangle here. Like we just add a physics force, so it will work for any shape. Maybe each of the levels will have a unique uh, object you're pushing around. Well, anyhow, uh, that's the end of the video and uh, thank you for watching. Hope to see you on our Discord server.